Hello, it is Foundation Friday, October 16th, 2020. Steve Cypress here enjoying another spectacular, beautiful, I think it's fall. Hard to tell when it's still 100 degrees every day here, although today I think it only, only hit about 98. Uh, and a beautiful sunset behind me as we continue to dive into the classic, fantastic book, The Psychology of Winning, by Dr. Dennis Waitley, and we've been talking about positive self-motivation for the last couple of Foundation Fridays, and now we're going to finish off that topic with how to take action, 10 action steps to get more positive self-motivation into your life, your business, your world, and a couple of these have to do with motivating others, which also is important for leaders and business in family life and elsewhere. Step number one for more positive self-motivation is to replace the word can't with can in your daily vocabulary. Can applies, according to Dr. Waitley, to about 95% of the challenges you encounter. Interesting, we've never met and yet he is aware of 95% of the challenges that I encounter. But I digress, step number two, replace the word try with will in your daily vocabulary. People who know me know I always say try is a euphemism for fail. Somebody, uh, whatever team lost the Super Bowl last year uh, says we tried to win the Super Bowl. The winning team doesn't say we tried to win the Super Bowl. Try is a euphemism for fail. So Dennis Waitley says, Dr. Waitley says, this is a form of semantics. It simply establishes your new attitude of dwelling on things you will do instead of on things you plan to try with that built-in excuse in advance for possible failure. Try is a euphemism for failure. Leave it out of your vocabulary. Step number three for positive self-motivation, focus all of your attention and energy on the achievement of the objectives you are involved with right now and forget about the consequences of failure. Failure is only a temporary change in direction to set you straight for your next success. And remember, usually get what you think about most. So think about success and achievement and not failure. Number four, make a list of five of your most important current wants or desires. And importantly, next to each one, put down what the benefit or payoff is to you when you achieve it. Then look at that list every night before you go to sleep and every morning when you get up and dwell on your five most important current wants or desires and the benefit or payoff to you when you achieve it. Number five, seek out and talk to someone who is currently doing what you want to do most and doing it well. Whether it's a hobby or whether it's business, find an expert. Get the facts. Make a project of learning everything you can about winners in the field. Take courses. Get personal lessons. Generate. Got to turn the page. Excitement by mentally seeing yourself enjoying the rewards of success. Step number six for more positive self-motivation. For every one of your goals, make it a habit to repeat again and again, I want to, I can. I want to, I can. Develop this simple new affirmative self-talk vocabulary about yourself. Number seven, uh, interesting, is an action step for more positive self-motivation, and this is all about motivating others. Paint the picture of what the achievement looks like and feels like when you are motivating others and demonstrate your confidence and belief in their ability to accomplish that given objective. Objective. So instead of saying, firings will continue until morale improves, dwell on the positive and say, I've been observing your performance and want you to know how encouraged I am with your progress. And of course, say that in your own voice, in your own words. <laughs> And don't sell like I do when I'm just reading it. Number eight, do not pay attention to your fears. Don't worry about them. They're simply a part of being human. And I love this part. If any of your fears becomes obsessive, uh, pay attention to social media <laughs> these days and this whole shutdown and virus and all the fear mongering. I mean, people are just living in a state of constant fear. Uh, if any become obsessive, I love what Dr. Waitley suggests here. First, get a thorough health checkup to determine if there is any organic association. 
<laughs> I just can't, can barely read it with a straight face. In other words, if you are living in fear, what's wrong with you? <laughs> there might be just something physically wrong with you. <laughs> Otherwise, you might consider professional counsel involving relaxation, behavior modification, biofeedback techniques, or my favorite solution, associate with other winners. They will help you overcome your fears. Stick around me for a while and you won't be thinking about your fears and all that BS. You'll be focusing on all kinds of positivity and you'll accomplish a lot more and have a lot more fun doing it. Number nine, give solution-oriented feedback whenever people tell you their problems. This seems to be something to do, again, with motivating others. Uh, however, when the problems are yours, focus on the solution, not the problem. Focus on the immediate question, what's the answer? What's the solution? You know, I talk about a lot, uh, the old saying, don't cry over spilt milk. Like you see spilt milk on the ground, most people, their first response is, hey, who did this? How'd this get here? What's going on? Results oriented, my first response is always, oh, I gotta clean that up. And then after I clean it up, if I really care, who did that or how did it get there or whatever, and I, if I wanna learn from it and I want it not to happen again or whatever, then I'll ask those questions. But first, I see a problem, I go right into solution mode. Dr. Den, I, maybe I got that from Dr. Dennis Waitley, the first time I read this book decades ago. But Dr. Waitley is seconding that here, and again, maybe he said it first, and I'm seconding it, uh, which is extremely likely, by the way. And I hope you also get a tremendous positive benefit out of the psychology of winning. And the final step, number 10, to inject more positive self-motivation into your life. Concentrate all of your energy and intensity without distraction on the successful completion of your current project. Finish what you start. Whatever you're working on, get to work on it until you finish it. I'm working with uh, one of my business partners right now, and we have about a dozen very similar projects we're working on for a dozen clients. We're working on a similar project for each one of them. And I would like to dive in to client number one, project number one, take all the steps and get it done. He likes to get part A done, for all 12 of them, then go do part B and then part C. And I'm like, ooh, not way, my way of doing it. And it's a whole, I've, I've recorded entire videos on that strategy, by the way, the difference between the doing 12 things at once and now nothing, if it takes a day each, you have still nothing done until day 12. Uh, do them one at a time, focus, as Dr. Waitley suggests, get that first one done on day one, you have something done. Now you're feeling so much better and all excited. That momentum starts carrying to day two. You get a second one day, day three, you're rolling. Uh, so that's what Dr. Waitley suggests here is concentrate on the successful completion of your current project. So using, just finishing that example, this business partner of mine is seeing this project as we need to get these 12 things done. And he sees that as a project. Or I would see it as 12 separate projects and I would say, let's get number one done. And perhaps I also got that from Dr. Dennis Waitley. I also got that from other successful entrepreneurs and hanging around successful people, which I highly suggest that you do as well. And that'll do it. That finishes up the fifth quality of a total winner, according to Dr. Dennis Waitley, positive self-motivation. We'll dive into quality number six, next Foundation Friday. And I say, Phil is here. Great seeing you, Phil. Sounds like a variation of NLP. Um, possibly, yeah. I'm guessing that uh, Bandler, uh, you know, they, they took some, uh, some uh, uh, inspiration, that's the word, uh, from similar sources, if not from Waitley himself, uh, from similar sources. Uh, NLP all about Neurolinguistic programming, all about programming your mind to get more done. And of course, that's pretty much the title of the book, The Psychology of Winning, Programming Your Mind to Get More Stuff Done. And then the uh, modern world of NLP, you've had the, uh, the predators of the world take it over 
and bastardize it from how to train your mind to get more stuff done to how to manipulate other people's minds into getting them to do what you want. So you'll see it if you know what it is and you pay attention like you know Phil does. You'll see it in all kinds of uh, selling, advertising, marketing situations, all kinds of uh, tricky phrasing and mind tricks being used. Uh, whereas originally NLP designed to help you get more accomplished, get done what you want to do. Um, uh, modern advertising, marketing, and salespeople use it to manipulate others uh, into getting, making more sales, getting them to take the action they want them to do, which I'm all in favor of as long as you are um, honest and ethical about it, that you have an excellent product or service that actually will solve a problem that the prospect has. Then I'm all in favor of manipulating and persuading and whatever you want to call it, selling and convincing that person to take that action when they're on the fence and they're not sure so that you don't leave the meeting uh, with the solution to their problem and they leave the meeting with their problem. You want to do when you, uh, that's as Jay Abraham says, your moral obligation. And you can actually solve a problem, you have the moral obligation to do whatever it takes to get that solution in the hands of the person with the problem. Uh, similar to, I always say, if you're driving down a road next to a lake and suddenly you look out the window, you see somebody drowning in the lake. You have a moral obligation to stop the car, dive in, and attempt to save that person. So that's how I look at business, sales, advertising, marketing. Uh, have a moral obligation if you have an excellent product or service that solves problems for people, market the heck out of it. Advertise and sell the heck out of it to get it to as many people as you can. Anyway, how did I get off on that? Oh, because of Phil's comments. So thank you, Phil. But that'll do it for this week's Foundation Friday segment on the psychology of winning. Whether it's psychology or... Uh, physiology or anything else, I hope and my sincere wish for you is that you too are winning in your life. And that'll do it for today. I'll catch you back here again tomorrow on Social Media Saturday. I'm trying to aim the camera to get the reflection of that gorgeous purple, orange, and yellow sunset behind me. I can't seem to capture all the colors. Trust me, it's beautiful. Catch you tomorrow on Social Media Saturday, over and out. Bye-bye.